Hey, how are you doing? Lewis here with Fedivo. Today, we're gonna to talk about some reasons as to why I left Premiere Pro in 2016 as a legacy Premiere Pro user. In fact, a number of tutorials on my personal channel were based on Premiere Pro. Some got up to a million, I believe. Uh, and since then, I have become a full-time DaVinci Resolve editor. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve instructor. So today, let's have a look at some not so obvious reasons why you should switch if you've been thinking about it. And I'm not gonna talk about the very obvious things, you know, like it's faster, it's cheap, it's better, it's got amazing color grading. Let's talk about some small but very efficient elements that DaVinci Resolve has. And before we jump in, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. And, uh, Let's get started. So I think one of the very first things we need to talk about is formats, accepted formats, or I guess for better words, formats which Premiere doesn't accept. See, before DaVinci Resolve was known as an all-powering software that can take you through the entire pipeline of a video project, it was primarily known for its color grading applications. As a result, there are gonna to be tons of different files sent to colorists around the world and therefore it's needed to, uh, there is a need in able to accept a wide variety of codecs and formats. Premiere, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Now, this is a short film, uh, an edit for a short film, uh, the one with the Ferris wheel, one I'm very proud of, uh, come out in 2019. And ironically, when I was loading it over to Premiere uh, for an edit for, to be used as an example throughout this tutorial, these files would not load because they were Blackmagic RAW files. And as a result, I needed to download the Blackmagic RAW player from Blackmagic's website in order to play uh, these files throughout uh, Premiere Pro. Is that a big issue? You know, no, you know, I, I've just got to go to a website. I've got to download a codec, it's fine. I've downloaded plenty of codecs. However, it's just not Blackmagic RAW. And the issue is, is it's fine if I'm using Premiere on my desktop, but the moment I start jumping on from system to system, and then I've got to continuously download all of these different formats, um, it's not ideal really, and especially if you, if you, I know it's rare, but if you don't have internet access, um, and, and then kind of funny, if we go by here, these are still offline because these are cinema DNG files. And um, I just honestly did not have the, the patience to download Cinema DNG. But it doesn't necessarily stop there. So here is one of my pride and joys. I'm just gonna bring this to the left side. This is a massive archive of um, incredibly high um, quality audio from the BBC. They're in FLAC files, which is a, a lossless format for audio. So let's just choose, I'm gonna choose European uh, soundscapes here. And then I'm just gonna take, uh, what should we choose? Let's go Italy roadside station. Bring that, and I can't drop it in. Likewise, if I just maybe bring this over, try to drop it into the media pool. Uh, import failure, file format not supported. Yet we jump to resolve, instantly imports into the timeline, waveform instantly viewable and playable. That's an issue to me. Uh, now this is primarily set up because, you know, Adobe's audio workplace is for audition. Uh, you would bring it into audition, you would do the formatting and the processing you need to do an audition, then send it over to Premiere. That's one step too much for an element that should already be included in my opinion. So I've currently got a red Komodo. Uh, we're filming on a red Komodo right now. And you'll find that it has similar issues when you're looking at these sort of files. So I'm gonna to go to a red test. Let's just bring in these two files. So we've got a file import failure to say that these aren't supported. If I click okay, we do have something here. We've got this footage of uh, a camera test me looking stern in the bathroom. Now, first of all, when I instantly drag it to the timeline, um, the video footage isn't there. What about this one? Yeah, that's not working either. Let's try and bring the file in. Okay, so when I bring the folder in as a whole, we're now it's now working correctly. Uh, however, you may notice that it repeats. And even though we're just using the same folder, 
This is because of the way that red code works and it's a safety uh, precaution. As you're recording, it will segment into different files. However, when you try to import red footage directly from the desktop in Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro really doesn't like it and you've got to go through the official, uh, let me just delete these two files, the official process, which would be go into media browser. I'm going to go to secondary storage uh, for Devo. And here now you can see it's processing. So this is from our tutorial on, um, this looks like the softbox, uh, the diffusion filter, I believe. So I'm going to click these and I'm going to click import. Okay, so now these have been imported correctly. There's, um, if I bring it into the timeline, we can see it works in um, a proper manner. Uh, it's not been segmented into multiple different files. It's all been conformed correctly. But again, though, if I just go over to DaVinci Resolve, and, and here's the thing, like, realistically, you should be using the media page. You should be using the media pool to organize, place your clips into bins. But there are pieces of content which, you know, it's not inherently important. Um, so say if I've just gone out to do some stock footage, I come back in and I'm thinking, right, then I can just take these files, drag it to the desktop and it instantly loads. There's no need to go through an official channel to import the footage. And it's those small elements that I feel are really important to me because it helps speed up the workflow, not by hours, not by 10 minutes, but it's these 10 to 15 to 30 seconds here and there that slowly add up over the course of an edit project. Now, this is not to say that Premiere Pro is inc incompatible with a number of different formats. It's not. Like I said, like the Blackmagic RAW um, aspect, uh, it, you can download the accompanying codec or the accompanying player for that footage to work within uh, Premiere Pro. But for me, I just prefer where Resolve automatically accepts these file formats and there's no messing about. So I talked about how those 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds here and there um, from the um, how Resolve handles files is a lot more efficient and those seconds saved will ultimately lead to a shorter edit time. The same could be said for how Resolve handles um, files in regards to editing basic properties such as position and zoom. So I'm just going to open up Resolve here. Let's delete this for Devo footage. Uh, you can be sure to go check that out if you haven't looked. It's an interesting video. So what I have here in the right-hand side, this is called the inspector. And the inspector is basically the equivalent of the effect controls in Premiere Pro. However, the way that it works, in my opinion, is a lot more proficient, it's a lot more fluid, and visually appealing. So say here, I want to, um, what can we see that they both share? Time remapping, okay. So let's go to the similar clip and I'm gonna click time remapping. And here now I can look to change the speed of this uh, particular clip. I find Premiere has a very dated user interface in regards to the adjustments within the inspector. Everything is done with uh, text fields and sliders. And that's not to say it's not dissimilar to what we can see in Resolve. However, it's a lot more visually appealing. And I feel like you can really see what you're looking for almost instantly uh, in comparison to Premiere. Now, if we open up the speed change, again, just here, having this wheel with uh, the direction of the speed and if you want to freeze it, I find this is so much more efficient. Again, it even gives us the option to ripple timeline, which pushes everything forward when you slow down the clip, or if we pull it, it will uh, reduce the timeline. Again, it's not a massive thing. It's, it's not the fact that, oh yeah, resolve is free. It's these small intricacies. And one of the biggest aspects is here, using the position and zoom to change uh, where we're at with the file. Can you do that in Premiere? Absolutely. So we just go here and we go up to the position. And here we can change it, okay? That's fine. However, what I find is an incredible annoyance with uh, Premiere Pro. Let's just say um, 
that I want these to be more of a close up, these three shots of the woman speaking. So I'm gonna highlight them all. Now I can no longer select these clips in the effects control panel. So what I would need to do is and scale in, then edit, copy, go here, and then paste attributes, okay. And now these clips too are zoomed in. Again, it's just a few clips, but if we go over to resolve, we do the same thing. If I get my keyboard shortcuts correct. So one, two, three, hold them all, zoom, reposition, done. Again, it's not a major thing, but it's these small elements that is really gonna increase and improve your workflow and just stop an edit becoming a tedious task. Okay, so I've talked about the efficiency of DaVinci Resolve's Inspector, and I've talked about some audio formats which can't be uh, brought into Premiere Pro. Let's talk about the efficiency of how audio is handled inside of DaVinci Resolve. Obviously, we have the Fairlight page, and I'll be honest, guys, I rarely touch this because I don't need to because the edit page does everything I need to just for my online content. So I'll go back to the edit page. Now again, in the inspector, when we go to uh, the audio tab, we have a full visualization. And do you know what, let me just bring that down. We have a full visualization of uh, the basic audio controls from the equalizer down to the frequency of uh, some of the cutoffs. Again, the sliders and the text fields is what you're gonna be finding in Premiere, but I find it's just more useful to use. So if I jump over to Premiere, and I go here. First of all, there is no sort of equalization uh, to be found in the effects control panel. What we do have is here, we have an audio uh, mixer. This can be brought down in Resolve by using the equivalent panel button. And again, talking about the visualization of things, here we've got um, a pan tool which seemingly gives you a better visualization of where exactly you could direct in the audio in comparison to Premiere, where we've just got this little slider left or right. But let's talk about just some of the core basics here. So I'm gonna to skip to the start of this edit. And here I have some fairground audio. I want the audio to, uh, to fade in. So what I would need to do is set a keyframe, set a secondary keyframe and bring that down. And it's playing really badly. <laughs> but that's how you create a faded. Or what we can do is go to the effects uh, library. And what we have here is three different types of uh, fades, but th this is more so for a cross fade into other audio. So we just drag that to this uh, area here and it'll cross fade. Not too difficult, but we jump to resolve. Let's go to the exact same audio of the fairground. Grab the handle, pull in, audio's fade in. It's just that simple and that proficient um, that I find it quite wild that Premiere even hasn't even introduced a feature like that um, since Resolve has now been uh, on the market. But let's talk about the effects of audio. So I'm just gonna close this mix for a minute because it's taking up a little bit of my timeline. Pay attention to how nice things snap in and out because that's something that we will touch on a little later. So I'm gonna go to the effects panel. Uh, I'm gonna bring it down a little further. Let's go to, you know, what. What does, what does Premiere share? Let's go to audio effects. Um, let's go to delay, okay? So, bam, put delay onto the fairground and we instantly get this pop-up uh, display of um, the delay controls with all of the parameters that you can adjust. Um, sometimes, you know, I think if I go to the reverb, we even get quite a few variety of um, presets already built in into the software. 
Very cool, instantly pops up. I don't have to go looking for it, it's done and dusted. If I go to Premiere, I'm gonna add, uh, let me get back to the fairgrounds. Are we on it? We are on it, let me delete that. Add delay. It's been added to Premiere Pro and it is up here in the delay tool. And this is all we have. We just have, again, the sliders and the numbers. Maybe if I add some reverb, let's add some studio reverb. So here now we can go to edit and then we get a somewhat pop-up. And here we've got some uh, presets too. But there's a lot of clicking, there's a lot of chasing about. And that's one thing that I found with Premiere is you're always chasing to find the tool that you need rather than it just being presented to you. With Resolve, if you're doing something, add a limiter, I get a limiter straight to me. I don't have to go into the inspector, although that is one thing you can do, is jump over to the inspector, select the clip, and then on the effects here, we have all of our um, effects that we've added to this one thing. If you ever wanna get back to the pop-up, it's there. But you're giving it straight away. It's not a case of me then having to open the inspector, go from the audio to the effects, then click that tab. You know, it, it, there's several different clicks involved. And we just don't get that with DaVinci Resolve. And again, this isn't even the Fairlight page. This is just the edit page. But it's just so much more intuitive um, that it really ages Premiere Pro, in my opinion. So one thing that Adobe has always had going for them is the full customizability of their interfaces. Um, you know, maybe I want the mixer to have its own place by there. Maybe I want the effects controls to, to mimic the inspector over in Resolve. So I can bring that over there. Nice. And um, maybe I want my history to appear at the lower bottom. And then I don't want the audio mixers, so I will close that panel. It's very customizable. It's one of the great things that Adobe has. And you'll often find in the workspaces, we can preload, uh, we can load pre-existing workspaces uh, to see as fit. And yeah, you know, it's great. However, what I find is because Adobe has so many windows and so many panels, as we can see here, we have what? maybe a third only active, is again, you have to go chasing. You have to find stuff. In Resolve, the entire user interface is a game changer. First of all, let's talk about the aspect of how there's a pipeline of bringing your media, uh, bringing your media into the media page, editing in the edit page, correcting in the color page, and then you can mix in the audio page if, if, if you uh, so wish, and then to deliver on the delivery page. So quite consistently, I've talked about chasing materials and you know the way that Premiere's UI works is really a highlight of that, where everything needs to be clicked and found. Uh, I've got to change my workspace. If I want to go into color, I've got to change back to editing when needed and you know if I maybe want to see more of the effects here I've got to undock the panel and bring it over there then close this you know it it's a lot of chasing it's a lot of hassle can I even close this a little bit more and you know now I'm trying to increase the timeline but this is only increasing the monitor and you know I don't want to sound pedantic I feel like it I can feel a little bit um, malicious with some of the criticism here, but often I find like just this messing around is too much. Whereas when we go to resolve, let me just jump back to the edit page. And as I said earlier, to pay attention to the snapping of things, the panels work in a very responsive and magnetic way. I wanna open up the effects. I click the effects panel. I want to see more of, so I'll jump onto the video transitions. You know, perhaps I don't want to scroll too much. So I open the expander. The timeline smoothly pushes back. I don't want to have the um, preview monitor for my uh, selected clips. It removes itself. Everything is so fluid and responsive and perhaps in a way somewhat Apple-like dare I say, maybe old Apple, Steve Jobs Apple. <laughs> um, and it's, it's perfect. 
it's it's very intuitive i want stuff gone i remove it if i want it back i click a button there's no pulling there's no dragging of areas and however if you want that you can do it so say if i want to open up my edit index and i want a full view of the timeline so i close that but i want to see a little bit more over here i can extend it it is possible however if i want to return back to where i was just close the edit index whereas with premiere if i want to say close this now and then close that or i'll tell you what let's just move this over here you know there's there's it it's for me i often feel like it's you you're getting uh, a load of jigsaw pieces putting them in the box and just rumble in the box and everything becomes a contorted mess. And I often remember uh, when I was a big Premiere Pro user, I was always going back to reset save layout. And um, ultimately, it's just too much chasing. And finally, one of the core reasons as to why I left the Premiere Pro platform in 2016 as a legacy user and jumped over to DaVinci Resolve is because I'm a PC gamer and I had a great gaming rig. What does that have to do with anything? Well, one of the core components of a great gaming rig is a very powerful graphics card, a GPU. DaVinci Resolve leverages GPU acceleration far greater than Premiere Pro. Now that's not to say that Premiere Pro doesn't use the GPU, nor does it mean that DaVinci Resolve doesn't use the CPU. They both use both components. However, the way that they use them is vastly different. So I'm here on Adobe's uh, support page. Uh, what we can see here is that currently most of the processing is done by the CPU and the GPU assists in processing certain tasks and features. Usually this is down to playback, uh, video rendering and some uh, GPU accelerated effects. So if we open up Premiere, first of all, this is activated by going into the project settings, making sure the render is on GPU accelerated, going down into preferences in general. Um, you can activate this for the color management, which requires uh, GPU acceleration. Um, and then in the effects panel, any effect that has this little icon means it's a GPU accelerated effect. So you're gonna benefit from having a better GPU. However, Premiere Pro is a CPU first software. Now, DaVinci Resolve, on the other hand, is completely different. DaVinci Resolve's GPU optimization is evident in several aspects from the color grading process, which benefits significantly from GPU acceleration, enabling real-time playback and the rendering of complement node structures. Now, furthermore, DaVinci Resolve also supports multiple GPU configurations, and we can see this in this pop-up. Uh, I, I just have the one GPU. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't even think my computer could handle another uh, in terms of size. Um, but this scalability, you know, it, it's going to ensure that the software can take full advantage of the available resources. Um, whereas with Premiere Pro, it, it just isn't applicable. Okay, so there are five not just my sole five reasons, but five of many reasons, but five reasons that I wanted to share because I think these elements aren't typically discussed by um, folk on the forums and on YouTube. But hey, at the end of the day, one thing to consider is that a $5,000 camera from Sony and a $5,000 camera from Canon, they're gonna do the same thing. They just do small things differently. Canon, in my opinion, has better skin tones. Sony has far greater autofocus. And it's kind of the same with DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. Both software are incredibly capable of editing projects from small online videos up to feature films. But it's these small attributes that can contribute to a better um, edit workflow. And I believe that DaVinci Resolve takes that. So I have been Lewis with Fedivo. Make sure you guys leave us uh, a comment if you've enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you guys next week with a smashing tutorial and uh, I'll catch you guys soon.